Dear friends, in this video, we are going to discuss the scapula bone. I hope you are clear about the various parts of the scapula, isn't it? What are the borders, surfaces, angles, processes, and notches of the scapula? Now, let me talk about the attachments of the scapula. Okay, attachments. What are the muscles and ligaments which are attached to the various parts of scapula? I'm not going into the depth, so I'm going to focus mainly on the important muscles and ligaments. Okay, that will be asked to you. Okay, fine. So, which view of the scapula is this one? You, you should be able to answer. Yes, this is the anterior view of the scapula because you are able to see the coracoid process, which is facing anteriorly, isn't it? Coracoid process, fine. So, can you tell me the three muscles which are attached to the coracoid process of the scapula? What are the three muscles which are attached to the coracoid process? And there are three ligaments are also attached to the coracoid process. Can you please name the three muscles attached to the coracoid process of scapula? Yes. Number one, short head. Okay. Number one, coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. It is arising from the coracoid process, so called as coracobrachialis. And along with the coracobrachialis, there is one more muscle having common origin from the coracoid process called as, yes, short head of biceps brachii. It, it is not long head, it is short head. Please keep in mind. Okay. So coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps brachii. Okay. Both are having origin. Origin. Okay. Two muscles are getting common origin and insertion of one muscle. Which muscle? exactly insertion of pectoralis minor okay pectoralis minor it is not major minor so please remember the three muscles which are attached to the coracoid process of the scapula common origin of two muscles and insertion of one muscle what are the three ligaments attached to the coracoid process yes just remember the name of the ligaments one is coracoacromial which is extending between acromion process and coracoid process, so called as coracoacromial ligament. And another ligament is extending from the coracoid process of scapula to the clavicle bone. So obviously, yes, coracoclavicular ligament. And another one is extending from the coracoid process to the humerus, upper end of humerus bone. So obviously, coracohumeral ligament. So coracoacromial ligament, coraco clavicular ligament and coracohumeral ligament. So I hope you are clear about the three muscles and the three ligaments which are attached to the coracoid process of scapula. Fine. So let me talk about the two muscles attached to the acromion process of the scapula. Two muscles attached to acromion process. Okay. So right now I am tracing the medial border of the medial border of the acromion process. And right now I am tracing the lateral border of the acromion process. Okay, lateral border. So the medial border of the acromion process, okay, it gives it gives insertion to trapezius muscle. Insertion to trapezius muscle. Fine. And what about the lateral border of acromion process? Yes. Lateral border of acromion process gives origin to deltoid muscle deltoid muscle actually those particular fibers are called as acromial fibers of deltoid because of the site of origin those fibers of deltoid arising from the acromion process will be called as acromion process of sorry acromial fibers of deltoid okay so i hope you are clear about the two muscles related attached to the acromion process fine yes now can you tell me the muscle which is getting origin from the costal surface of the scapula you know this is the costal surface and this costal surface of scapula is otherwise otherwise known as subscapular fossa why it is called a subscapular fossa fossa means depression so obviously what will be the name of the muscle arising from this area yes it gives origin to the subscapularis muscle subscapularis is the muscle arising from the subscapular fossa which is nothing but costal surface of the scapula fine yes now you know the glenoid cavity isn't it right now i am tracing this shallow depression called as glenoid cavity which is facing laterally isn't it so please remember 
just above the glenoid cavity i am marking as number 1 in this diagram and just below the glenoid cavity you can find two small elevations so what will be the name of these two small elevations just above and just below the glenoid cavity of scapula yes elevation so above the glenoid cavity we have supra glenoid tubercle tubercle means small elevation and just below the glenoid cavity okay we have the infra inferior below the glenoid cavity infra glenoid tubercle okay so do you know the importance of these two small elevations yes the supra glenoid tubercle okay it gives origin to which muscle yes long head of biceps brachii long head of biceps brachii fine short head of biceps brachii origin already we have studied i hope you will be remembering isn't it so please remember supra glenoid tubercle origin to long head of biceps brachii what about infra glenoid tubercle yes it also gives origin to one muscle namely long head of long head of triceps brachii triceps brachii and one more important mcq question that will be asked to you what is the peculiarity of the origin of the long head of biceps brachii which is arising from supra glenoid tubercle yes it is enclosed within the fibrous capsule of the shoulder joint that means the origin is intra capsular intra means inside okay so it is arising within the fibrous capsule of the shoulder joint so the peculiarity of origin of long head of biceps brachii is it is intra capsular origin long head of biceps brachii intra capsular origin fine okay fine so let's talk about the uh, muscles attachment from the dorsal view posterior view or dorsal view of scapula fine so already you know this is the spine of scapula this is the acromion truss of scapula just above the spine we have the supra spinous supra spinous fossa fossa f yep, representing fossa okay and just below the spine the larger depression is called as infra spinous fossa so what will be the name of the muscles which are arising or originating from the supra spinous fossa and infra spinous fossa yes supra spinatus muscle origin of supra spinatus muscle isn't it and the infra spinous fossa will give origin to infra spinatus muscle infra spinatus muscle okay supra spinatus and infra spinatus muscle origin okay fine and what about the borders of the scapula what about the borders of scapula muscles attachment yes so i hope you will be knowing right now i am tracing which border of the scapula yes this is the medial border of the scapula okay this of right side scapula which is medial which is lateral we have studied already isn't it so i have highlighted the medial border of scapula isn't it so medial border of scapula along which surface of the scapula exactly costal surface or dorsal surface yes along the dorsal surface okay so please remember the medial border of the scapula along the dorsal surface gives insertion or attachment simply attachment you can say otherwise insertion specifically insertion to three muscles what are the three muscles getting inserted into the medial border of the scapula along the dorsal surface yes from above downwards remember in order that is important from above downwards this area this area means actually just above the root of spine of scapula this is the area called as root of spine of scapula this area root of spine of scapula so just above the root of spine of scapula okay we have the insertion okay the insertion of which muscle number 1 yes levator scapulae levator scapulae muscle okay fine and at the level of at the level of root of spine of scapula we have the insertion of which muscle one small muscle called as rhomboid or rhomboidius whatever 
minor small muscle so called as rhomboid or rhomboidous minor muscle fine and just below just below the right now i am marking just just below the root of spine of scapula this entire area this entire area gives insertion to one large muscle obviously called as rhomboid major larger muscle so called as rhomboid major muscle so i hope you are clear about the three muscles which are getting inserted into the medial border of scapula along the dorsal surface fine fine and please remember the two muscles you know this is the lateral border of scapula starting from here to here this whole area is called as lateral border isn't it lateral border so what is the peculiarity of lateral border of scapula yes the lateral border of scapula gives origin origin to two muscles two muscles what are the two muscles arising from the lateral border of the scapula yes the upper part of the lateral border fine this area just a minute the upper upper part of the lateral border this area gives origin to one muscle i am marking in uh, roman letter one okay and the lower part of the lateral border of the scapula gives origin to another muscle okay so what is the muscle arising from the upper part of the lateral border yes it is called as teres minor teres spine minor origin okay and just below the origin of teres minor the larger area the lower part of the lateral border gives origin to roman letter 2 which muscle teres major teres major fine so please remember the various muscles attached to the medial border lateral border of scapula and muscles attached to the supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa okay and i told you spine of scapula isn't it this is the upper lip of the spine of scapula this is the lower lip of the spine of scapula okay upper lip and the lower lip of spine of scapula okay so upper lip of spine of scapula okay it gives insertion to trapezius insertion to trapezius muscle okay and the lower lip of spine of scapula lower lip of spine of scapula gives origin origin to deltoid muscle to deltoid muscle okay not only acromion process also the upper lip and the lower lip of the spine of scapula also giving attachment to the trapezius muscle and deltoid muscle yes so so far we were talking about the parts of scapula anatomical position and side determination of scapula what are the various muscles and ligaments important muscles and ligaments attached to the various borders surfaces of the scapula and the processes of the scapula and one more muscle i have missed important muscle i have missed c right now i am marking which border of scapula yes medial border of the scapula isn't it and also the inferior angle of the scapula isn't it along which surface along the costal surface okay so remember the medial border okay the medial border and the this is inferior angle isn't it so the medial border and the inferior angle of scapula along along the costal surface along the costal surface gives insertion to one very important muscle clinically which muscle exactly the medial border and the inferior angle of the scapula along the costal surface gives insertion to serratus anterior muscle insertion to serratus anterior muscle Fine. very very important point actually okay. and what is the applied aspect of the scapula bone applied importance of scapula bone the very important applied aspect of the scapula bone is winging of scapula winging of scapula as you see in this diagram okay so the two important point three important points about winging of scapula it is due to injury injury to long thoracic nerve injury to long thoracic nerve there will be obviously paralysis of which muscle long thoracic nerve supplies serratus anterior muscle okay so you know the site of insertion of serratus anterior isn't it so in this condition 
the medial border of the scapula medial border of scapula will become more prominent that is the meaning of winging of scapula the medial border of the medial border of scapula will become more prominent medial border of scapula becomes more prominent due to paralysis of serratus anterior which is due to injury to the long thoracic nerve okay fine so that's the end of scapula osteology discussion thank you all